Hey YouTube, I got another project. Got a Lexus IS300 here today, and I'm gonna be doing brake pads all the way around and front rotors, so I can show you guys how to do that. Uh, I'm not doing the back rotors, but they're gonna be the same exact steps as the fronts. So uh, let's do this. All right, first thing you need to do, obviously, is pull the wheel off. Okay, after you get the tire off, it's gonna look like this. All right, now you're gonna need a 14 millimeter. A uh, wrench or a ratchet with a socket, and there's two bolts over here. There's one here, and then at the bottom, there's one here and one there. So you need to pull those two off, and then the caliper will come off. After you pull those two bolts out, the caliper just comes out. Make sure you don't drop it because you'll rip this hose if, you, if you're not careful. Should really take tie wire and tie this to the control arm or something so it can't fall. Then it'll you have access to your pads and all your um, clips. So first thing you want to take off are these helper springs. These help the pads separate when you're not pushing on the brake. You should buy new, all new hardware too when you're doing your brakes. Then these just slide out. Slide it out like this. Same thing on the other side. And then to get these clips off, just use a flathead. It'll pop out like that. There's one on each side. Alright, so here are the pads out. This is the old one. This is the new one. So as you can see, it's uh, quite a bit of difference. Okay, so when you buy new rotors, they're going to come wrapped up in plastic. And they're going to have oil all over them so that they don't rust. Because when they're sitting on the shelf for a couple years, you don't want them to rust, right? So what you want to do, let's go ahead. Take some brake clean and get all the oil off. Just do this to both sides and then you're ready to be able to install this. Next you need to take off the caliper bracket right here. So there's a bolt here and there's another one that's right underneath it. So it's only like this far apart. Four inches apart. They're going to be a 17 millimeter. And you just take these off. And then this bracket will come off and you can pull the rotor off. Alright, so this bracket is uh, right here. Alright, so once you pull off the bracket, there's nothing holding the rotor on. So you just slide it off. There's no screws. Some cars have little mounting screws that go in. Don't try to use a normal screwdriver. You have to use one of the impact screwdrivers that you put the screwdriver in and you hit it and it rotates. Because you'll strip it out easy and then you'll be pissed. Uh, but on this Lexus, you don't have anything. You just slide off and then grab the new one that you cleaned, slide it on and you're, that's it. Simple, right? So next thing, I'm going to show you how to re-lube these. So come up here with me. So these just pull out. These are the sliders. You want these to be nice and lubed, otherwise your brake pads can catch. So just take a rag and also, a little bit of that brake cleaner we used before. Go ahead and hold it. Spread it a little bit. Get all the nasty old dirty grease off. So, they should look like this. All nice and shiny. 
So we'll do the same thing on this side so you can see. This is going to clip in. If you see that groove, that's where this rubber hooks in so that dirt and stuff doesn't get in there super easy. So go ahead, a little bit of brake clean, wipe it. Then uh, just set it down, let the brake cleaner dry off before you try to put on some new. When you go to put the new on, let me grab the first one. All you have to do is simple. Just dip it, spin it, and out. And that's it. And try to get it in all nice. Boom. Push it. See how it clipped in? And that's what you want. That's it. Do it on this side. Push, twist, pull. Slide it in. Push, clipped. Now look, it's all even the rubber boot pushes it apart now. Where before it was stuck. So that's how you want it. Now we can go ahead and start putting it back together. Alright, so go ahead, hold the rotor straight, slide this. This goes in front. This is going to go in front of these eyelets, like this, and then the bolts are going to go through the eyelet into your part, okay? So go ahead, put this together, slide it over the rotor, slide it through here, and getting the first one started is going to be the hardest part. Once you get them started by hand, get them as far as you can, then just go ahead, ratchet them down. You're going to want to get them both snug first before you put any good pressure and torque them down nice and tight. There's one down here. Don't forget this one. And you could be creative. See, I have a paint can holding up this so there's no pressure on the line. Use whatever you have. If you have wire, tie it up. If you have paint cans, do that. Okay, so you're going to be putting these little clips back in. The new ones, you're going to want... <laughs> you're going to want the bottom part, which is here. This is going to ride pretty much you know over each side front and back like this you know so you're gonna have this needs to be far enough over so you can push it in and then you're gonna make the fat area against here and the skinny part facing out all the way around this small parts gonna face out when installing these make sure there's you're gonna have some that don't have anything and you're gonna have some they have this little uh, slider bushing type of uh, anti-rattle deal here. So, you need to make sure you have one and one. If you have two of these on one side like this, then the pad's going to be way too loose and it's going to shake around. If you have both of these here and here, the pad will damn near not even fit on here. So, go ahead. When you're doing it, you're going to have the pad. Snap them in. Start up here, tilt it in, then you're going to rotate this down and just push it in. That's it. It should wiggle. It should not be so tight that it, you can't wiggle it because that means it's not installed correctly. Start over, ask a friend, do something. So you're going to want to make sure you compress these pistons all the way down. I did it with two big C-clamps. They have special tools you can use but um, C-clamps work these syringes are only like 10 bucks a piece so you just press them down both at the same time and then this will slip make sure you don't tangle up the the water or the hose just line that up 
Go ahead, put the screw back in. There's one. And then the second one is down in the bottom. And this is once again going to be the 14 millimeter. millimeter um, socket. Alright, if you plan on bleeding your brakes, it's going to be a two-person job. This is the bleeder screw right here. It's going to have a little rubber cap that goes on top to block dirt from getting in when you're under normal driving. So you get that, pull it, pull it off, then you're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench. Okay, then you're going to need the person to go in the cab pump the brakes a couple times till it's firm then have them hold it you're gonna loosen it you're gonna see it come out tighten it they're gonna pump it they're gonna hold it then you're gonna loosen it again what you're waiting for is at the beginning when you first either put a brand new caliper or you drain your system and you want to put new it's gonna spit out like not a flow like a sink so you want it to look like your kitchen sink coming out of here. You want a nice smooth flow. So you're just going to keep repeating that process. The person inside is going to push and hold on a brake. You're going to loosen and then tighten. You want to tighten it before the flow stops. And then uh, as soon as the flow is smooth, then you're done. Tighten it. Put this little cover back on. And that's it. You're done. Alright, so I just showed you how to do the front brakes. Now all you're going to do is do the same exact steps, but on the other side of the car. It's the same exact thing. And then I'll show you how to do the back right now. Alright, once you get the back tire off, since you don't give a crap about these old pads, I get the screwdriver in here, and I pull. You want to pry the caliper outside of the car. This compresses the cylinder on the inside, so that now... When you unbolt it and put the new pads on, it's not too tight. All right. Now there's the same 17 millimeter bolts, one here and one down here. So you gotta take these off, and the caliper pops right off. There's no bracket on this. All right. Now we got the caliper out. There's a pin right here and a cotter pin. You want to take this cotter pin out, pull the pin out. After compressing the piston all the way, you should have enough clearance to get these, these slide in right through the top. Um, so you don't actually have to take this off at all. You just pull the clip out, pull the pin out, and then compress it, and slide in the new pads from the top, and then start doing this again. But I want to do inspect it anyways, so I took it off. Um, but you don't have to. So you're gonna get these two little clips, okay? When you get the new hardware, you're gonna slide these in like so. So it looks like this, okay? Then you hook it, and you hook it on those two eyelets, squeeze it together. It's kind of hard to show this and do this at the same time. There we go. Okay. And that, just like that. Now, which I'm going to end up getting in the way of the camera to do this, but I use a little force here. Push down on here. Push this pin through. And that's it. You're done. So here's how worn out his back brakes were. So, as you can see, not very good. So he's lucky he decided to do it now before it started scraping and ruining his back rotor. His back rotor was in good shape though. No need to turn it. So like I said with the front brakes, the rear brakes are going to do the same steps just on the other side. Uh, there's no need for me to go through and show you again. 
So remember on the back brakes, you don't have to take the caliper off in order to do the job. Um, but if you want to inspect everything, or if you need to replace the rotor, then that's how you take it off. You have to take those two same 17 millimeter size bolts out. Uh, so until next time, wrench on.